Okay, before we get this video underway, I just wanted to say, oh my goodness, I am so, so excited. I never go into YouTuber mode. Hey, what's going on, guys? Team Art here, and today I'm bringing you some more Black Ops 2 tips and tricks, and I'm super excited to be showing you some more jump spots, stuff like that. I never go super excited, but boy, oh boy, do I love my drafts. And the NHL draft is today. By the way, shout out to T. Martin, absolute legend of my childhood over there. But either way, we're making some videos before the draft actually commences because this is our regularly scheduled programming. If you want to tune in to all the stuff we have for the actual draft, hey, 3 p.m. PST, an hour before the actual draft program begins, we will be going live here on the YouTube channel. Heck, if I'm feeling it, we might even go live a little bit earlier to talk about the picks, talk about the teams, talk about the prospects, and everything in between. We will be streaming for as long as the first round goes, and we will be making some videos throughout the entire event because I assume there are going to be some big picks, some surprising picks, a few trades here and there, so it's going to be a very, very fun. 48 hours. And I say 48 because day two of the draft, we're going to make a ton of videos as well. I know we have Red Wings fans watching this video. So, hey, tomorrow, check out the rest of the Wings draft selections. We're going to be making videos on all the Canucks stuff, all the Montreal stuff, all the Detroit stuff, because I love these teams. And then making some videos on the other picks that I find interesting. Last year, it was Colton Dock to Chicago and Taylor McCarr to the Colorado Avalanche. Just some funny picks like that. We'll probably make a few extra videos on top of. But either way, this video is not about the draft. It is somewhat of a retrospective look at a previous draft. We're going back over onto our friend Gorillas' Twitter account because what they did was they posted some NBC draft comparisons. We already made some videos talking about the comparisons from back then. Jack Hughes was compared to Patrick Kane and Steve Eiserman when he was drafted. Capo Caca was compared to Huberto, we're going over to 2018 instead of 2019 and talking about a guy that was taken at a spot that a lot of people were super surprised to see him go at. It is Detroit Red Wings surprise slip, Philip Zadina. Now, Zadina, if you take a look at the profile of what this guy is right now, he's currently an RFA, but I don't think Steve Eiserman is going to go out there and put this player in a position to leave. I don't think there's going to be a trade or an offer sheet. There's probably going to be a contract extension signed soon. But Philip Zadina right now is a 22-year-old November-born player from Czechia. He is 6 feet 196 as a left-handed player, and he plays both right wing and left wing. Now, if you go over to the entire sentiment of what Philip Zadina was supposed to be back in 2018, all you got to do is look at the draft rankings. This guy was ranked a pretty consensus third overall mark by every scouting outlet except for Bob McKenzie, who had him at number four. Now, NHL Central Scouting had him as the third best North American skater, which, if I try to remember off the top of my head, was because they had Svechnikov and Brady Kachuk on top of Zadina. But aside from that, ISS, Future Considerations, McKean's all had him at a number three overall ranking. Bob McKenzie also had Kachuk there, too. The rest of the first picks went as follows. Rasmus Dahlin and Andrei Svechnikov. These guys were one and two unanimously across the board, pretty much. So Philip Zadina was kind of in that territory where a lot of people were like, okay, by the time the top five is over, he should be gone. Philip Zadina should not fall to a Detroit Red Wings team at six or a Vancouver team at seven or a Chicago team at eight. And the reason for that was because back in his draft season, 2017-18, he had 82 points in 57 games played and 44 goals as well. This guy was a goal scoring machine. He could score from the perimeter. He had seven goals in seven games at the World Under 20s, so the World Juniors for Team Czechia. He was over a point per game over there, too. This is the scouting report that was written by Curtis Joe on Elite Prospects from 2018. Zadina is a dynamic offensive forward that plays a complete game. A deft and agile skater, he exhibits explosive mobility up and down the ice. In all three zones, he proactively looks to create problems for the opposition, and his awareness is indicative of his high level of hockey sense. He also knows how to make plays and scoring chances materialize. He has a goal scorer's toolbox, complete with the individual puck skills that one comes to expect from today's elite offensive players. The accurate release on his shot is noteworthy and is a defining aspect of his offensive capabilities. Defensively sound, he disrupts lanes and pressures the opponents to make hasty decisions. He is tenacious in pursuit of puck control and transitions up the ice naturally. All in all, Zadina can be categorized as both a two-way forward with a well-rounded game and a dominant offensive force. Now, 
He did not go top five, like a lot of people thought he was pretty much a guarantee to go. This was because Montreal and Arizona both reached for centers that weren't really supposed to go that high, but they just kind of needed the center depth, so they took him because they were the highly ranked centers of the draft. Jesperi Kotkaniemi and Barrett Hayden went third and fifth respectively, and you had Philip Zadina passed down because Brady Kachuk was taken fourth by Ottawa. Detroit snagged up Zadina at six. Now, if you go over to the NHL draft comparison that was made here by NBC Sports, Gurulis, his Twitter account, goes out there and pretty much summarizes it nicely. Here is the little screen grab from back in 2018. Philip Zadina was being compared to Boston Bruins winger David Pasternak. And, I mean, Pasternak is a guy that is one of the top goal scorers in the entire NHL. The guy has a Rocket Richard trophy to his name, so... I mean, that's a pretty good name to be compared to, all things considered. If you go over to Pasternak and talk about what he's up to right now, he's making $6.6 .6 million a year till the end of 2023, so he's got one more season at that contract. He's 26 years old, so this is pretty much the prime of his career. A right-handed shot, 6 feet, 194. So there you go, you can kind of see the profile similarities right there. Pasternak, 6 feet, 194. Philip Zadina is 6 feet, 196, so they're pretty much the same build. Pasternak, though, back in 2017-2018, was pretty much breaking out into what a lot of people are familiar with him today. He had 80 points and 82 games played, 35 goals as well, and he was two years removed from that 48-goal campaign that he would eventually get in 2019-20, where he had 95 points in 70 games. Do the math, over 82, 95, divided by 70, multiplied out by 82, David Pasternak was on pace for a full season's worth of production at 111 points. And if you only do the goals, 48 goals over 70 games would have put him on pace for 56 goals on the year. So Pasternak is legitimately one of the top players in the entire National Hockey League. This recent season, he had 77 points in 72 games, also at 40 goals on the year. Now, if you go over to the comparable seasons, because this is kind of what the series is about, right? Where were these players back when they were drafted and how they are now? Pasternak was drafted all the way back in 2014, and in the 2013-14 season, he was merely just a guy at the Allsvenskan level that was putting up some pretty good numbers as an underage player. He had 24 points in 36 games for Sol d'Italia, and this was the second-tier Swedish league. He also had five points in seven games for Team Czechia at the World Under 18s, not to mention three points in five games at the World Juniors. So with all things considered, you could definitely say that Zadina had a better international showcase for the same team than Pasternak, but you could debate Hay is under a point per game at the second tier pro men's league in Sweden, that much more impressive than what Zadina did, 82 points in 57 Halifax Mooseheads QMJHL games, I'm not really too sure. In the years after getting drafted, though, Zadina and Pasternak's seasons could not have been more different. Zadina went over to the Grand Rapids Griffins, where he had 35 points in 59 games played, which is pretty good, but you had yourselves David Pasternak, who was over a point per game in the AHL, and who made his debut in the Boston Bruins system that same year, getting 27 points in 46 games played. This guy was drafted straight out of the second-tier pro Swedish league, and then he made the NHL. The year after that, he had 26 points in 51 games played. Sure, not an improvement point per game-wise, but you still had yourselves a solid NHL player right there. Zadina, in his draft plus two year, was still bouncing around up and down with the AHL and the Grand Rapids Griffins. Now, sure, his regular Red Wings production stat line was 15 points in 28 games on pace for about 40-ish points, which is good, really similar to what Pasternak did in his second year, but Pasternak's third year after getting drafted, 2016-17, was really when he started overtaking Zadina in this race. Pasternak's third season saw him put up 70 points in 75 Boston Bruins games, and 34 goals as well. Philip Zadina, in his third season after getting drafted, definitely did not have the same level of success. He had 19 points in 49 games played, and he was half a point a game at the World Championships, not to mention the fact that he started the season out in Czechia playing under the team Osolari Trinic that has his dad as the assistant coach. Now, in Zadina's most recent season, his draft plus, what is that, four year? He had 24 points in 74 games. David Pasternak, in his draft plus four year, had that 80-point season in 82 games played. This was the time when Philip Zadina himself was drafted. And so now, if you take a look at just the pure hard point production totals, 
While the race was kind of similar a few years ago, Philip Zadina's 2020-2021, his draft plus three year, really solidified that David Pasternak grew and progressed at a much better and faster rate than Zadina did in this season. If you wanted to say that Zadina would have been matching the David Pasternak outlook, he would have broken out in 2020-2021, but as we can see, that didn't happen. Now, whatever happens with Philip Zadina in the future, we will see. But it all starts out with Steve Eiserman potentially giving this guy a contract and giving him another chance. Now, I won't discredit the idea of him getting traded because we have made videos about that in the past. But at the end of the day, Philip Zadina is a guy that I still want to see grow and progress into a better NHL player. We all know that he is capable of that. It's just... Is it just going to boil down to coaching? I'm not really too sure. Is Lalonde going to be able to unlock this player and his full potential? St. Louis did it with Caulfield, so who knows what Zadina is going to have in store next season. But talk in the comments either way, all your thoughts about what happened between these two players, Zadina and Pasternak, the comparison that was made by NBC. If you're a Red Wings fan, let me know your thoughts in the comments about this entire idea as well as your thoughts on the draft. Join the channel at 3 p.m. PST, man. We're going to be streaming here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sign on. And... Bye.